All right, welcome back to the show. Thank you for sticking it out. I, I Yes, I know it's been a while since my last episode, but trust me, I have been building up tons of content and will do my best to release these and create these and get them out to you as soon as possible because I have gotten such great feedback from all of you. You're, you've missed the episodes, the consistency of them. Uh, it has been the busiest first quarter of, or first almost six months I have ever had, I think truly. Uh, so thank you for bearing with me. Thank you for being patient. And thank you for being loyal listeners of this show. Uh, trust me, it does mean a lot. It means more than you would ever even know. So I, I greatly, greatly appreciate you tuning in. So uh, a couple things. First of all, those of you who are tuning in on video, you can actually see on YouTube, I have a new setup here. Yeah, you're like, where's that uh, you know padded wall that you have that's normally behind you? It is still there. It is in uh, a separate part of this room. I've just reconfigured my office, my podcast old podcast setup is on the other side and this is my new wall i just i had to show it off this is my brick wall this did not come with my house this is something i built i put up with my own two hands now i will say this this began as a uh, like a thought that hey i could do this thing over the course of a couple weekends uh it is real brick uh it is um real mortar it's real everything there i was thinking it would be a couple of weekends uh and it was like i'm gonna say six months plus easily it might have been eight nine months now uh for those of you who have ever built a brick wall put one up you know what i'm saying that this is a horrendous project now i love a good project i've done tile floors i've done wood floors i've done patios i've done all kinds of stuff this to me seemed like it was going to be a fun project and wow. And it's not like you can stop in the middle and change your mind. You are committed. This is one wall. It's not even two or three walls. It's one wall. <sighs> and it was tough. So I'm proud, very proud. That's why it's now my background. Uh, but if any of you are thinking about putting up a brick wall and doing the same, please reach out to me and I will convince you otherwise. There are much, much better things you can do with six months of your, of your life. So, in any event. Uh, okay, that said, today's episode is uh, about some recent events. I, I haven't done a lot of current events in this show. I'm actually going to work on doing more because there's so many great leadership examples and and situations and, and lessons that we can bring into this show based on stuff that's been happening out there. Um, as you know, I have not made this a political show and it won't be. Uh, but it will be a little bit more incorporating some of the stuff that's going on in, in business li life and, uh, uh, and, and uh, our surroundings uh, so we can pull some of those lessons into this show. One of the things that happened recently, if you read in the news, was the CEO of CNN was fired recently uh, a couple of weeks ago, Chris Licht. And it's a really interesting story. And I wanted to share with you some of the leadership leadership lessons that come from this because here was somebody that had all the makings of somebody who could do this, the role of a, of a CEO of CNN, uh, potentially extremely well, um, had certainly worked like crazy. I mean, this is a guy that was working 80 plus hours a week, uh, truly, um, and still was not able to to make it a successful run. He also had uh, a, a certainly a great track record, a background uh, of success. Um, he had all the makings of somebody who really could have done what needed to get done. Now, this was a classic turnaround job. I mean, this was really taking a, a news organization that had been steadily uh, dropping in ratings. Uh, and he came in about a year ago with the mission to not only change CNN, but really to change journalism as a whole. As you know, uh, the credibility of journal journalism has been at stake uh, for some time now. And his mission was really to to kind of bring CNN to a point where it was um, had regained some of its lost uh, respect, some of its lost uh, certainly viewers and, and listeners, and really uh, put CNN on a new place on the map. So but here was what's interesting that there were a number of things that happened. Um, and, and in the spirit of trying to keep this a relatively 
quick episode. I want to give you a lot of content. I'll give you some of the background, but I want to make the points of what some of the great lessons are to take away from this. Now, I've been in situations many times in my career of doing turnarounds, and turnarounds are really exceptionally challenged, challenging to do. Some of it has to do with the, the reasons that you're turning around the organization. Sometimes it's been an organization that's been absolutely misled. Sometimes it's got culture issues, financial problems, whatever the situation is, there's a reason that you are there. And doing a turnaround is incredibly challenging. But there were some things that Chris Licht did not do. There were some things that he did that compromised his ability to really lead um, an effective uh, turnaround. So let's start with some of the things that really are kind of the basics. So here was somebody who walked in. Now, one of the things he was um, challenged with was not just the fact that this was a turnaround uh, and just the normal challenges of a, of a turnaround, but his predecessor, um, who had been there for 10 years, Jeff Zucker, was absolutely beloved. Uh, he was admired. He was respected. He was kind of that larger than life type of CEO that just drew people in. He was very high relationship, uh, the type that there were 4,000 employees at CNN and everybody felt like they were part of this family um, and part of his family. So he knew kids' names and knew people's, he had nicknames for people and they called him nicknames. And it was just this kind of very loving uh, feel, um, extremely, extremely high relationship leader, uh, respected, uh, admired, loved. So to say that his departure left a sting in the organization is an understatement for sure. So you know, challenge for sure for Chris Lick to step into a situation like that. Um, but he made a couple of really key uh, mistakes. One was he went on record making disparaging comments about his predecessor, Jeff Zucker. Um, and for what reasons, you know, it's hard to say. I mean, he almost had this obsession, obsession with him. Um, and, and maybe that was him feeling threatened by him. Maybe it was just he knew how much people were loyal to him and he needed to kind of stake a new, put a new stake in the ground. So he felt the way to do that um, was to make disparaging comments about the predecessor that I really loved. So immediately uh, that drew some opposition to him internally within CNN. Um, so right off the bat, you know, you're stepping into an organization that whether it was led by somebody who was admired or not, it's always a dangerous thing to make disparaging comments about a predecessor. Uh, it just puts you in a situation where you, you're immediately uh, you're, you're immediately, uh, making it personal. Um, you're not stepping into something that's, you know, that's just purely business oriented. It's, it makes it seem from an, a, an outsider's perspective as though there were some other issues there, or maybe even some personal relationship that you have with this person. Either way, it's just not a good idea to bring in your feelings about the predecessor to the organization. You may have them, they may be strong, but keep them to yourself. It usually doesn't bode well when I've seen leaders share how they feel about their predecessor. In addition, um, what what Chris Lake did was was make disparaging comments about just CNN as a whole. So here was the organization that he now was running, and he was making disparaging comments about the CNN that was before him, which was only a matter of months prior to him. It was all the same people that are still there that he's now leading. So in essence... Even though he's making broad brush comments, people are taking that very, very personally. So he did a couple of things with those comments that really caused him a lack of trust um, and confidence in people. Um, so that's number one mistake that he made uh, is kind of bad mouthing the, the, the pr uh, prior regime, so to speak. Uh, don't do that. <laughs> Number two, here's a real uh, key one. So here was his predecessor who was so loved and part of that was just his whole his whole environment. He was just in the mix of everybody. He was right in the middle of everything. In fact, his office was on the 17th floor, right where the news room was, where the production studio was, where the journalists were. I mean, he was literally right in the center of all the action. And that was a big part of who he was. He was right in the center of all the action. Well, Chris... When he came in, one of the first things he did was he took uh, that office of Jeff Zucker's and converted it to a conference room 
And then he moved his office five floors up, up to the 22nd floor. And and actually, some people said they couldn't even find it. They didn't even know where the office was. It was in this really secluded, hidden part of the, the, the 22nd floor. So talk about making a statement. It really not only separated himself physically from everybody, from the organization, but it really separated himself uh, in terms of really being in touch with the organization. And most people ended up describing him as very detached. So for everything that his predecessor did to build relationships, you know, Chris kind of came in and, and had a very uh, low relationship, uh, just almost this very um, uh, just secluded way about himself, kind of aloof. Um, and just an alienated people. I mean, bottom line, when you're when you're when you're that far removed physically, it's really hard for you to get a pulse on what's going on, and it just makes a really big statement, right? That you're you're not accessible. Uh, you're not somebody who really cares enough to be that close to what what is actually happening with the organization, and it kind of lends to that whole perception that okay, you're going to lead from the ivory tower and actually not really understand what's happening in the organization. So that was, that was mistake number two. And that happened really early. Here were a couple, a couple of things that he did. Number, number three, um, he came in and, and fired some really admired and loved people. Now this is a tough thing and I'm not even going to make a a huge deal about this, but you've really got to be very cautious and, uh, and thoughtful about how you make, a change in an organization. Now, granted, I'm I'm a firm believer that if you can't change the people, you've got to change the people. And oftentimes an organization is failing because of the people and the leaders, certainly in that organization. But he made some calculated decisions that really were not probably well thought out. My guess is he didn't really have, so this is pure opinion for me, but my guess is he didn't really have a clear picture on how what the ripple effect of those decisions would be. He fired Brian Stetz, uh, Stelter, who was the uh, chief media correspondent and uh, anchor and some key journalists that really were very uh, loved, admired, respected in the organization. So that was another kind of trust blow. Um, and and along with the trust, so here's you know one, two, three. Uh, the fourth thing is also trust. And that was he made some comments early on about not firing any individuals or major layoffs, yet very quickly uh, announced some pretty significant layoffs. So right away, he lost a lot of trust. And I see leaders that come into organizations like that, and this goes in that category of overpromising. So be really, really careful of what you say uh, especially regarding layoffs, especially regarding some of the things that you may need to take away that were there. Doesn't matter whatever size organization it is. I mean, you know, you can have some small things that are really important to people. And if you make comments that, hey, you know, we're, we're not going to do anything, we're not going to change anything, or we're not going to change that national trip or whatever that we do every year. Um, and you find yourself as you look closer at things that you really have to and you have to make some changes, it's really that much more difficult because you've gone on record and you've announced to people that you don't plan to make those changes. So just be careful of the things you say. Much easier to say, hey, you know what? My goal is not to make any changes uh, that affect these areas. That's my objective. At the same point as, as CEO, I have to look at every option. What I will tell you is I'll promise you transparency. I'll, I'll promise you You'll understand the big picture and, and this and that. You can make comments that are are at least not promissory that kind of back you into a corner. Um, and I've seen a lot of leaders do that in many times where they say things that they ultimately, it comes back to bite them because they said them too soon and without all the facts. They didn't really do enough of the due diligence. They didn't really come to the right conclusions. Um, they didn't really know the, the true picture of things. And they made those comments way too early. And you see that a lot with politicians. You see a lot of ta- a lot of politicians make promises they can't commit to, they can't deliver, um, and they get into a situation and then they have to backtrack on that. You see that uh, time and time again. Uh, so here's the fifth thing. And the last thing, the, the most important thing, you have to build the trust. You have to build the respect of the people in the organization. You know, what they're looking at and anybody, and you've heard me say this in other episodes, what they're trying to do and trying to assess 
is they're really asking themselves in determining whether they're going to follow you. They're asking three things. One is, does this person really care about me? Um, do they, do I trust this person? I will say it's four things, not even three. Do I trust this person? Um, do I want to go where this person wants to go? So do I believe in their mission and their vision? And then do I think this person can actually get me or get us there? Is this person capable of leading us effectively to this person? Now, in this case, Chris Licht made people feel like he didn't care about them. Um, he lost their trust for those things that I just shared with you before. They actually believed, a lot of them believed in his vision. His vision was to to change not just CNN, but journalism and make it much more uh, respected and bring it back to what it used to be where it was uh, reporting facts. It was fact checking. You know, he had a, a statement he would say all the time, uh, this is Chris, and he would say, listen, you know, some people like rain, some people don't like rain, but we won't ha have people on this show that will say it's raining when it's not raining or it's not raining when it is raining. Uh, and, and that was a real big kind of mission that he had was to change CNN to bring it back to a place where it wasn't alienated people that were on one side of the aisle or, or the other. It was really based on truthful reporting. But his decision making really was what lost a lot of respect from people. So he made some key blunders uh, that really were kind of hard to come back from. You know, in in January, he dis he, he was very uh, forceful in t telling the producers to not cover uh, the January 6th um, con uh, con um, Congress committee that was uh, really something that CNN view viewers and most viewers wanted to tune into and see. And because of that, they got slaughtered by MSNBC. So it made the decision and really not big deal that committee hearing and, and in reality, that proved to be a mistake. That was probably smaller in scale to a couple other things. Uh, he put a really controversial uh, anchor uh, in a in a much more prominent spot in the morning, um, and really tied a lot of Chris Chris's own and CNN's own future to that decision, which that proved to backfire. Uh, and then the last big decision he made was was really uh, kind of the the straw that broke the camel's back, and that was. Um, to to try to win back uh, the Republican audience and do it in a way where it went against what CNN had been trying to do. Um, and this is not political in any sense, uh, but he ha they had decided and he had decided to do a town hall meeting in New Hampshire uh, with Donald Trump and fill that town hall with uh with uh trump supporters so it became a very much of a trump platform now whether you love him or you hate him uh that really was a great thing for trump and insiders in cnn uh didn't understand it they didn't really understand what was happening and it seemed very disingenuous to not only both to republicans but also to democrats it seemed like a very uh a, a very um a move that was very calculated for a specific benefit. And it ended up really, really backfiring. And that proved to be a decision that he tied everything to. It ended up backfiring in a matter of, I think it was days after that began his, um, his exit out of CNN. So uh, I'm sharing this with you because I think there's a lot of lessons to be drawn from this for anybody who's taking over an organization in general but certainly an organization that is struggling that there's a turnaround that we're trying that that you're trying to make as that C CEO or that leader of that organization it is absolutely critical to think of those four decisions four questions that people are asking you so they're asking themselves rather can i trust you do you care about me do i believe in the vision that you have do i want to go to that place that you're trying to take the organization and do i think you're the person that can actually take us there so that's the trust, it's the respect, it's decision-making, it's how you're interacting with people, it's the communication, it's everything that goes into those four 
questions and answering those um, effectively. So in any event, I thought that was interesting to share. There's tons of news pieces on that. I'm interested in your thoughts, of course. So uh, shoot me a note, shoot me an email, let me know uh, your thoughts and some of the things maybe that I might've missed that were other lessons from this. Um, I'm also interested to know other pieces uh, of your life or your business experience, situations where you've learned leadership uh, from either your own actions or even somebody else's i'd love to profile some of these stories and just bring them to the show so in any event uh thank you for tuning in thank you again for being patient uh with me i am in production mode there will be a lot of episodes coming soon trust me so thanks for tuning in you know the deal as always like share subscribe go down below give a five-star review and i will see you next time thanks